Hi guys, my name is Dave Searle and today I want to talk to you about trail running shoes. The most important thing to remember with trail running shoes is there's no perfect do-it-all option. We all run in different ways and we all want shoes for different things. I want to talk to you about a few different types of people and what they want shoes for. And then we're going to go on to talk a little bit more about the ins and outs, the technical parts of buying your trail running shoes. So let's say you're the kind of person who lives in a city and you go out into the forest and you want to run on the trails in the forest. You don't need something which is going to give you loads of traction. You want something which is a good mix between running on hard surfaces and running on spongy soft surfaces in the forest. So you don't need like deep lugs to give you traction. You just want a nice flat sole just like you'd get with the Solomon Xcream 3D. This is absolutely perfect for people who are living in the city and they do a little bit of trail running but spend most of their time running on the road. So this brings me on to the next kind of person who wants a shoe and that's somebody who's doing technical runs. Something like the Speed Cross 3 would be a really good choice because it's got good traction so it's great for soft, soft ground. It's not so good on hard stuff but it's nice and soft so you get a feeling of, of running but it doesn't give you great support. If you do long distance runs, this is not going to be the best shoe for you because your, your arch is going to collapse, it's going to give you pain. But for technical running, it's a really good option. So let's say you've already worn through a couple of pairs of shoes, you're quite an experienced runner and you've got nice strong feet and a strong running style. You want something which is going to push you forward and something that you can run mid to long distances comfortably and gives you support without holding you back. Something like the La Sportiva Bushida would be a really good choice. This shoe is nice and light, gives you good traction, but also nice protection underneath the forefoot. So when you're running on your toes for a long time, it's going to feel nice and comfortable and you can just run for kilometres at a time and not feel like you're getting tired. And finally, let's say you're the kind of person who wants to do a really long distance run or you get tired quite quickly or you need a shoe which has just got really good protection because you end up doing lots of trail running on really rough terrain you want something with good protection and good support Solomon Wings Pro this is going to give you support underneath the arch because the foam here is a lot harder which provide cushioning and support and also the frame of the shoe is nice and supportive so it holds your foot in a good position and when you get a little bit more tired you need that support and control to be able to maintain a good running style without being too tired and feeling like your ankles are going to roll over. Hopefully that's given you a good overview of different types of runners and what they need shoes for but there's a few more technical things we can talk about for helping you decide which shoe is going to be the best for you. The drop height or differential is a difference in height between the heel and the forefoot. A shoe with a larger drop height will tilt your foot further forward. These types of shoes are great for those looking to progress into high performance running as it forces you to land in the middle or front of your foot. As you progress you'll want a lower drop height so this is easier to run downhill in the middle of your foot without feeling like you're being pushed forward. The highest performance shoes for pros have no drop height at all and are lighter and easier, letting you move faster. Motion control refers to the support and control the shoe will provide for your arch. A neutral position is preferred where your lower leg is in a stable, straight line. This will reduce stress on your joints and give you a more stable feeling. Pronation, where the arch collapses inwards, and supination, where the foot rolls outwards, giving an unstable feel, will cause problems in your knees and hips. These problems need addressing through motion control. If you think you have either of these problems, we recommend seeing a podiatrist to get more specialised advice, especially if you're planning to undertake longer distances. The body acts as a natural shock absorber for running, but if you're heavier than 80 kilos, then it's worth going for a shoe that will provide extra cushioning. This will reduce the impact on your knees and hips. If your shoes are too small, your toes will hit the end when you run downhill. If you're buying technical running shoes, we recommend going one size larger. There's always new technologies appearing. Some shoes have different lacing systems, toe designs and everything. Don't get too bogged down with these different technologies because they're constantly evolving. Look at the most important thing, so whether it gives you enough support, whether it's got the right kind of drop height for you, whether it gives you enough cushioning, 
and if you're doing more technical running, if it's going to give you enough grip. So hopefully that's given you a good overview of what you need, given you a good introduction into buying trail running shoes. If you want to check out our selection of trail running shoes, visit shop.epictv.com. And if you need any more advice, you can chat to one of our gear geeks and they'll help you with buying the right shoes to suit your running.